Hey guys, it's Ebony here and I'm back with another video for you. This is another frequently asked question that I have been getting a lot on my YouTube channel and my Instagram, on my Facebook, anywhere I am on social media. People always ask me this question even though I've answered it in probably two videos, three videos, I don't know <laughs> who's counting anyway. <laughs> I've been getting this question a lot and I know a lot of people are new to my channel or new to any of my social media accounts, which is why I'm doing this video. That way I can point everyone to this video. Like I always say, I love to have a central place for everyone to get their answers and for everyone to hopefully, you know, get some tips and some guidelines for their own hair. So if you want to know the answers to those questions, then keep on watching. Okay, so the first question is very simple. It took me about mm, almost six years now to get my hair this length. Back in 2011, I did a semi big chop. If you are familiar with my channel, familiar with my hair story, then you already know about that. I cut my hair to my chin and I had the back tapered. I was too chicken to do a full on big chop because I didn't know how that would look and I was just not comfortable with having my hair that short. So I just did a really short cut. That way I can still you know, keep some of my confidence while I, uh, you know, ventured onto this new hair journey. So back in 2011 is when I cut off almost all of my hair and I've been gr growing it ever since. I've only cut my hair since then to get like trims or layers, but nothing to like really cut into the length of my hair. So in February 2017, that will make six years. Now as far as how I got my hair to grow this long, that answer is a little bit more tricky because what I did for my hair is good for me. I feel like it will be good for a lot of other people. I just don't want people to get discouraged when they don't have the same results as I have or um, see as much progress as I saw. You know, as everyone knows, everyone's different and everyone's DNA is different. So you can't always look to someone else to see you know, if I do that, then my hair will look like hers. I've always made that clear. And anytime I speak about this, because I don't want people to become discouraged because everyone has hair envy. I get hair envy. I know other people that get hair envy. It's just, it's just natural. You know, you always want what you don't have, even if what you have is really good. Just to give you some ideas or some guidelines, you know, as far as what I did to help you along your way, I will say this. The best thing that I could have ever done for my hair is to stop getting relaxers. Okay, so I don't really want to go in on relaxers because I don't feel like relaxers do any good. There might be some good relaxers out there, I don't know, but in my opinion, I just think they do more harm than good because you can get your hair to be straight without a chemical. It's just that chemical makes it straight no matter what. So I mean, if that's what you desire, then that's completely fine. But I'm just no longer an advocate for relaxers at all. I used to get relaxers and I didn't even get them that often. I would get a relaxer two, maybe three times a year because the hairdressers that I would go to would be always be like, girl, you don't need a relaxer every six weeks or every, you know, three months or whatever the case was. They were always, you know, very hesitant to continue to put a lot of chemicals in my hair back to back. So um, once I did that, even though I was getting relaxers as few times as I did, once I stopped getting them, I saw a huge, huge difference in my hair once I was able to fully embrace my natural hair. My hair grew so much faster, or you know what? My hair probably grew at the same rate, but my hair wasn't breaking off anymore. I feel like my hair, broke off in ways when it was relaxed and I wasn't even aware. For example, like this little hair on the side of my ear here, right? This is pretty long. I never thought this hair here would ever get this long because when I had a relaxer, it always stopped about here. And I just thought my hair was that long on that side of, on the side of my head. I had no idea that it could grow this long. It could probably get longer, but that's just to show you that relaxers don't really do much for your hair. That was just something that immediately I saw a difference in my hair. So if you're getting a relaxer now and wondering why your hair isn't growing as fast or as much as you would like it to grow, I would definitely stop putting the relaxers in my hair. And my hair is even thicker. When I had a relaxer, everyone always thought my hair was really thick and I feel like it was, but now that I'm natural, it's even thicker. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know exactly what it is the chemicals and relaxers do to your hair, but once you stop putting it in, you'll see a huge positive difference in your hair. If you are on the fence, just give it a little bit more thought and I challenge you to go without a relaxer just to see the full potential that your hair can get to. Now, as far as everything else that I did to grow my hair, the biggest thing that I've always said Anytime someone asks me this, the first thing I always say is no heat. 
and people always look at me like no i gotta flat iron my hair or how do you you know deal with the two different textures you just have to find ways to blend them you have to find ways to make it work because no heat makes a humongous difference almost as much as not getting a relaxer because what's happening is when you're flat ironing your hair, and you know, I'm saying no heat as I sit here with straight hair. <laughs> when you're flat ironing your hair, you're forcing your hair to do something it doesn't naturally do. So it's breaking down, um, I can't remember the scientific term, but it's basically making the curl, you know, it's breaking down that whole molecular makeup so that it can straighten itself out. And that's not always a healthy thing for your hair. That's why you'll hear a lot of naturals say they aren't ever gonna straighten their hair, or they, have no, they have no desire to, or if they do, they do it once in a blue moon, you know, like hardly ever straighten their hair. Now, I normally only straighten my hair two to three times a year. It's not something that I try to do often because I don't want to continue to break down my curls. If you do it correctly, you do it very, very smart, you will have minimal to no heat damage. So if you do decide to straighten your hair, just, you know, do it as little as possible and make smart decisions as far as, you know, temperature of the heat, heat tool that you're using. Um, deep conditioning, all that good stuff. But if you can help it and you really, really are trying to grow your hair, try to stay away from heat as much as possible. My hair grows the most when I'm wearing just wash and goes or curly styles. I noticed that probably back in 2014 and I was just getting inches every time I would go months without straightening, straightening my hair. And I remember thinking that I would never be able to go, you know, too many months, sometimes even weeks without straightening my hair because my curls felt like so much work. But the more I got used to them, the more I um, did more styles, the more manageable it became for me and it didn't seem like such a huge task. But once I noticed that every time I wore my hair curly and I would straighten it, my hair was like two inches longer or felt like more. I don't know if it was more, but it felt like more. I was like, wow, maybe, you know, I wonder how long my hair could get if I go three months without straightening. I wonder how long it could get if I go six months without straightening. You know, it wasn't dry when I was wearing the curly style, so my hair was always being fed everything that it wanted. And I think that's why I was able to retain length as long as I was. So, like I said, if you can, stay away from the heat. Do as many curly styles as you can. If you must use heat, do so minimally. And please, please be smart about it because that's probably the number one way I got my hair to the length that it is today. No heat, long periods of no heat. It gives your hair a chance to just be in its natural state. When you aren't forcing your hair to do something it doesn't naturally do, then I feel like that's when it's the happiest. Just think about when someone tries to force you to do something you don't want to do. You aren't going to perform at your best or get the best results because you're not. it's not what you want. It's not what you... Um, naturally do. <laughs> I don't know how good of an analogy this is, but it just makes sense to me. You know, when your hair is left alone to do what it normally does and you feed that, you can only get good results. The next thing on my list that helped me to grow my hair is consistency. And by that, I just mean consistently doing things that your hair will appreciate. Like for example, deep conditioning. Deep conditioning was not something that I did consistently for a very long time because the wash day process was already so lengthy. But you have to be consistent with things like that because deep conditioning is what it revitalizes it and strengthens it for what you're about to do to it next. So that's something that's very important that you don't wanna leave out. And if you stay consistent with that, you'll see your hair become healthier, it won't shed as much. It'll just make really positive changes in your hair in ways that you probably hadn't experienced before. The next thing that I'm consistent with that I think is, you know, it's a small thing, but it's actually a really big reason why my hair is able to retain length is I tie my hair up in a scarf or a bonnet at night. I know that seems so silly. Some people are just like, seriously, nighttime? Like, yes, because if you lay your head on a cotton pillow with no scarf, you are sucking all the moisture out of your hair that causes split ends, that causes breakage, all the bad things you don't want to happen to your hair because that will eventually lead to my hair isn't growing. And it's growing, it's just not being taken care of while it's here and it's breaking off. And it's hard for you to see that, you know, on a daily basis, but it's slowly but surely happening. So every time you go to bed, make sure you're wrapping up in a satin scarf or a silk scarf um, or a bonnet. And if you can't seem to do either of those things, at least get a satin pillowcase. Satin pillowcases um, allow your hair to glide across the surface. It doesn't suck the moisture out of your hair. And it's just a much better alternative to waking up with dry, brittle hair. But the most important thing here is find what your hair likes the best. If your hair likes a certain deep conditioner, if your hair likes to be steamed, if your hair likes 
twist outs, whatever you can, whatever you find that your hair seems to respond the best to, stay consistent with that because that's what's going to help you to retain the length because your hair is getting exactly what it needs. So if you like a certain type of oil, if you like a certain type of shampoo or leave-in conditioner, be consistent with those things. So I hope this answers the question that everyone has been asking. I've been trying to answer a lot of you all's questions <laughs> for this series, but um, I kept getting the same one. So now that this one's answered, please ask me some different questions. In the meantime, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Share this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And as always, thanks for watching.